Hi, this is Dave from Notes and Volts, and welcome to part three of my KiCad design and manufacture tutorial. In parts one and two, we learn how to create a schematic and assign footprints to all the components. If you haven't watched these yet, go back and watch them and get up to speed. In this episode, we're actually going to create the circuit board, which is the whole reason we started this in the first place. So let's get started. Once again, I'd like to sincerely thank my sponsors, JLCPCB, for helping to make this series possible. JLCPCB is the place to go for high quality circuit boards, fast shipping, and a great price. Visit JLCPCB.com for live quoting, board customization, and orders large and small. And if you're a fan of surface mount, they can also provide custom stencils. So for all your circuit board needs, make sure you visit jlcpcb.com. All right, let's start building. To get started, we'll double click on the .keycad PCB file, which will open up PCB New, which is KeyCAD's circuit board editing software. The first thing we need to do is click the Read Netlist button, which will read in the netlist that we created in the schematic software. This contains all the footprints, the components, and how they're connected. To do this, just click the Read Current Netlist button. You can see the activity in the Messages window, and when it's done, click Close. And now you can see all the footprints kind of mixed together in the middle of the screen. First thing I like to do is move the components away from each other, just so I can kind of get a sense of what the board's going to look like. Move the mouse over the components and then push the M key. If you get a pop-up window asking you to clarify your selection, just make sure you select an actual footprint and then that will be the one you move. The white lines between the component is called the rat's nest. And they show you how the components are connected to each other in the circuit. So when you move things, just try to untangle the rat's nest as best you can. Now we're going to set our grid size. Notice that we're in inches in this case, and I like to lay out my circuit boards in inches. Um, we're at 100 mils grid size, and don't get confused. This is not 100 millimeters. This is 100 mils, which means thousandths of an inch. And here I am just moving the components around, trying to get a sense for the best layout for this board. I'm positioning things so the rat's nest lines are as short and as direct as possible. And by doing this, I'm going to make the uh, trace layouts a lot easier later. All right, so I've got a basic shape laid out. So now I'm going to draw a box around it and move the whole shape more central on my page. Now, at this point, I've decided that moving the resistors below the buttons is the best way and the most efficient way to route this out. And I've also decided I want to have the buttons to be one inch away from each other in a square pattern. To position them accurately, remember to use your grid and check the coordinate systems at the bottom of the screen, just like we did when we laid out the footprint. Now remember, I'm trying to position the buttons so they're one inch away from each other. So here I've noticed that my uh, grid setting won't allow the resistors to center under the buttons, so changing the grid to 50 mils fixes this. All right, at this point, I've got the components where I want. So now I'm gonna draw the edges of the board. So I'm setting my layer to edge cuts and selecting the graphic line tool. And all you need to do is just click and drag a line and draw out the outer edge of your circuit board. Now I'm just doing a simple square, but you can round the edges or make crazy shapes if you want to. Double click when you finish the box to close the shape. 
So once you have your outer edge defined, you can actually see what the board looks like. So if you go to the view menu and click 3D viewer, you can see your board in 3D. Looks pretty good. So when I saw it, I got a good idea that I could move the resistor names inside the footprint of the resistor. And to do that, just put the mouse over the resistor name and then push M and move it where you like. All right, so let's take a look in 3D and I think that looks a lot cleaner. Okay, we have our buttons and resistors laid out and the edges of our board defined, but there's one more thing we have to add. Back on our schematic, we defined a plus nine volt symbol and a ground symbol to power our circuit. This represents a standard nine volt battery that's going to connect to our board by a battery snap and two wires. So we're gonna have to add a couple of extra solder pads so we can wire up our battery. To do this, we're going to use the Add Footprint tool. So go ahead, click on the icon, and when the window pops up, click on List All. This will bring up a list of all the footprints currently in KiCad, and there's quite a few. So to narrow it down, go to the filter box and type in Solder Wire Pad. We'll choose the two times two millimeter drill pad. Once you click OK, you'll have the pad connected to your mouse. So go ahead and put it near the top center of our board. Now right now, these pads aren't connected to anything. So what we need to do is go to the arrow tool, place the mouse over the right hand pad and push the E key to edit. Now, if you think back to our schematic, we named this point plus 9V, and you can see this label on the right-hand side of the resistors. So to connect our pad to this point, we'll just type the name plus 9V into the net name field. We'll now edit the left-hand pad, which if you remember is named GND. If you now click on the Add Traces tool, you'll see the RATNES lines are showing that these pads are now connected. Now let's start connecting the components together with some circuit board traces. If you go to the track menu in the upper left hand corner, you'll see all the sizes of traces that we have available. And right now we only have one, which is 9.84 mils. We're going to add a few more trace sizes, so go to Design Rules in the menu and click Design Rules. In the window that pops up, click on Global Design Rules. We can create some new trace sizes in the Custom Track Width window. Now we'll go to Track 1 and type in 7 mils, which is 0 .007 of an inch. Now notice we get an error saying that the size is smaller than the minimum track size. The minimum track width is set up in this field. Every circuit board manufacturer will have a set of rules on their website telling you the absolute minimum track width that they can create. On the jlcpcb.com website, they state that their minimum track width is six mils. So let's go ahead and set our minimum track width to that. That will make sure that we never break that rule in our design. So now that that's done, we can now use our seven mil track width, no problem. The next thing we'll do is create a wider track of about 20 mils. A good rule to remember is that the thicker a track is, the more current it can handle. If you go online, you can actually find charts and calculators that will tell you the maximum current that a track width can take. This is a very low powered circuit, so that's not a big concern in this case. So now click OK and you should see our new track widths up in the top window. All right, we're finally ready to run some tracks. So we're going to run these first tracks on the front of the board. So make sure that the front copper layer is selected in the right hand menu. 
So we'll go ahead and run a track from the plus nine volt pad to one of the resistors. And since this is connected to our main power source, we're gonna use the thicker track width of 20 mils. Click on the plus nine volt pad and you'll find that the trace will follow your mouse and try to bend itself the best it can to get to where you wanna go. So we'll drag it down to the left hand side of R4 and click on that pad to end the track. Now I'll start a track on the left hand pad of R3 and connect it to the previous track. Now we'll run the R1 resistor to our main branch. If you click the mouse at any point, you can pin the track in place and it will help you better bend and shape it. And finally, we'll run R2 and connect it to our main branch. You can see that every time we connect a track, the white rat's nest line disappears to show that we've successfully completed that connection. So now that we have power connected to all our resistors, let's work on the other connections. I'm gonna use the smaller trace for this, our seven mils trace. The next thing we'll do is run a trace between the solder pads on the button. Now, normally I try to keep all the traces on a simple board like this on the front side, but as an exercise, let's run this one on the back. Now go up to your layers menu and select back copper. Now when I run this trace, you'll see it's in green, indicating that's actually on the back of the board. And we'll just go ahead and do this to the rest of the buttons. Now we'll go back to the front of the board and connect the other side of the resistors. If you want to erase a track, put the cursor over it and press the delete key. If you only want to erase a small part of the track, use the backspace key. At this point, we've run into a little dilemma. I want to get the resistor pad to pad one on the button, but the plus nine volt trace is in the way. To solve this problem, we're going to learn how to use vias. A via is a small plated hole that is drilled through the circuit board that allows a trace to switch from the front side to the back side. To add a via, we'll start drawing our trace on the front of the board. And the point I want to switch, I'll press the V key. Now you can see we've switched to the back side of the board and I can complete my trace. So now we'll do the same on the bottom button. Now, just so you know, normally I wouldn't use a via in this case. I try to reroute the traces to make everything fit, but I just want to show you how vias worked. All right, everything's looking pretty good. The only thing left to do is to connect the ground traces. Now, instead of doing what we've been doing, which is connecting everything with single traces, we're going to do something called a fill. A fill is basically using all the unused copper on your board as one giant conductor. And since we have so little going on on the back side of our board, I'm going to use this side as our ground fill. To do this, go to the add filled zones icon on the toolbar. Click on the upper left hand corner of the board. So in the menu, choose backside copper as your layer and we'll choose ground as the net we want connected to it. When you click OK, you'll have a line connected to your cursor. Drag that line around the perimeter of the board. When you get back to the starting point, double click to close the zone. You'll get this little green hash mark that shows you successfully closed up the board. Now right click on the board and select fill or refill all zones. And there's our fill. Notice how all our ground pads are connected to this fill layer. All right, so let's take a look at our board. So go up to view and select 3D viewer. Now, one thing to notice is that our power pads have the reference name kind of floating in outer space, and I don't want that to print on my actual board. To get rid of it, 
we'll go to the arrow tool and then right click on that reference symbol. We'll select it in the menu and then go to edit. And in this window, just set it to invisible and click OK. Now, even though it's still showing up, it won't show up on the final board. So we'll just move it out of the way. And that looks a lot better. The next thing I want to do is to label my power input so I know which lead goes to plus nine and which lead goes to ground. We'll select our front silk screen layer because I want this to show up in the silk screen. Now we'll select the add text tool from the toolbar and when the window pops up, type in plus nine V and OK. And there's our symbol and we can move it around with the M key just like any other object. I'll use the same tool to make a ground label. And let's double check in our 3D viewer that everything's looking good and I think it is. If you want to see the traces a little clearer, go to the preferences menu and deselect realistic mode. Now you get some really funky colors, but you can see the traces a lot easier. And there's our via and our copper fill on the back, and you can see the traces on the front. And double check, make sure everything looks okay, and everything looks good to me. The last thing you should do before calling it a day is go to Perform Design Rules Check. This tool will let you know if there's any problems or unconnected components that you forgot. Click on Start DRC to start the check. Click on both the Problems tab and the Unconnected tabs. And if you see any errors, make sure you go back and see what's going on. So we're seeing no errors here, so it looks like we did a good job. To save our work, go up to the Save Board icon in the upper left-hand corner of the window. All right, we made it to the end of part three. In the next episode, we're going to look at how you would take this and send it off to be manufactured. If you like this sort of content, make sure you follow Notes and Volts on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And if you really want to help, I do have a Patreon page. That's it for now. I'll see you next time.